So kinetics is chapter 12. There's what you should be able to do. Spontaneity means that a reaction has a tendency to occur. It does not imply speed. So it doesn't tell us how fast it's going to occur. Just that it's going to occur. So we need to know kinetics because we need to know how long a reaction is going to take to be complete. If we get a product, but it takes five years to get that product, then that's not a very good reaction. We would want to find a better reaction. So rate is simply the change in a given quantity over a specific period of time. It can be any quantity, in this case miles per hour, can be gallons per second, can be meters per minute. We're going to be dealing with reaction rate though, which is simply the change in concentration per unit of time. That concentration can be a reactant or a product, but we always want it to be a positive sign. And since our reactants will be going down, we add a negative sign or just take the absolute value of it. The instantaneous rate is the exact rate at any given time. We can calculate it by calculating the slope of a line tangent to the curve at that point. All right, so what that means is we take a point on our graph and we draw a line tangent to it. So just that one point touching. Then we find the slope of it, which is rise over run, which is our change in x, our change in y over change in x. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And absolute values. Hey, oh, and so you notice that's our rise, that's our run. The rate law is an expression which shows how the rate depends on the concentration of reactants. So looking at our equation, our reactant is NO2. So our rate law can be the um, rate is equal to the negative change of NO2 over delta T. But what we care about more is the second part, rate is equal to K concentration of NO2 to the power of N. K is a constant for the reaction, N is an order of the reactant, and K and N are both determined experimentally. There's no products because we're not looking at uh, conditions where the reverse reaction would contribute to the rate. So what is the rate? You have to determine what the rate is going to be defined as. As we saw earlier, rate could be defined as the rate of NO2 decreases. But it also could have been the rate of NO increasing or O2 increasing. Because our reactants should be going down and our products should be going up. Our reaction orders, which were the superscripts, we have zero order first and second. Zero, the change in concentration has no effect on the rate. First, the concentration and the rate are directly related, double one, double the other. And second order doubling the concentration quadruples the rate. Or if you three times it, then it would be to the ninth power. And the brackets just mean concentration. So if we look at this equation, they have some experimental data at the bottom. And notice the concentration goes down by one half. If we look at the rate, it also goes down by one half. So which order does this follow if it's directly related? Okay, so we can see that it's going to be first order because again, if it's directly related, that is first order. All right, here's one, and we're going to solve this one mathematically instead of just looking at it. First thing when you see these problems is write your rate law. So our rate law is equal to rate equals K concentration of A 
to the nth power concentration of B to the M power. Usually we just start with N, the second one would be M, and then P. Don't use O because O kind of looks like a zero. And N and M are different because they're going to have different orders or they can have different orders. So that's why, why we have to have a different variable for it. You have to look at the reactions and find two that are the same. If we look at experiment one and two, concentration of A stays the same. So we're going to have to set them equal to each other. Or not equal, we're going to divide the two equations. So plug in everything that you know. We have rate from reaction two. We don't know K. We know the concentration of A and the concentration of M. N and M we do not know. Then we plug in everything from experiment one into our equation. Notice that the concentration of A is the same. Our rates were the same, so we can make that a one. We can cross out K's because those are the same. So really what we're left with, and it looks like it may have got cut off, is one equals three M. There we go. So M has to equal zero. So anytime you have some number equaling one, it's always zero order. And because M corresponded to B, we're going to go in and put that above B so we don't forget. Now we're going to look and notice that two and three have concentration B being the same. And I usually just put bigger over smaller so the numbers work out better. You could have put two over three. So plugging in everything into my rate laws again. Again, K's are the same, so we can cancel those. As can we cancel the point three M's because that value should be the same. So we have two is equal to two N. So N has to equal one. So going back over here, we can put a one above A just so we remember that that's first order. And now we can rewrite our rate law to show those actual values. So we have a one and a zero. Anytime you have zero order, you can scratch that out or not even write it. So this is our rate law. When it says determine the rate law, that's what it's looking for to figure out the orders of your reactants. It also says evaluate the rate constant, so they want us to find what K is. Once you know your orders, this is easy. You pick any reaction. I'm going to use the first one just because it's there. Plug in everything that you know now. So we know our rate. So we're going to be using that equation. We know rates 3 times 10 to the negative second. We don't know K yet. We know our concentration of A is 0.1 and it's to the first order. Again, I left off B because it's to the zero order. You could have plugged it in. It would have given you the same answer. So K is equal to 0.3. And we're going to go over those units in class because the units of K are going to vary depending on the overall order. Talking about overall order, let's look at those. To figure out your overall order, you're just going to add up the orders of all of your reactants. So in this case, we had 1 plus 0 equals 1. This is a first order overall reaction. On here, we have 1 and 1, which is an overall order of 2. What do you think B is going to be? Well, 2 plus 1 gives us 3. And C? 1.5. All right, go ahead and pause the iPod here and try this one on your own.
All right, so on this one, we're going to need to write our rate. So our rate is equal to K, concentration of SO2 to the N power, concentration of chlorine to the M, as in my order. Find our two that are the same. And if you look, experiment one and two have SO2 as the same. So I'm going to use those two to start with, and experiment one is bigger, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on top. It's a good idea to write your experiments that you're using off to the left like that, just so you can keep track of which one's where. So 0.2918 is equal to K, 0.4N, 0.4M over 0 0.0730, K, 0.4N, 0.2M. Even if they're the same and you're about to cross them out, show your work anyway. Solving it out. You get 4 is equal to 2n. In which case, n has to equal 2. Okay, so that is our order of m, which is chlorine. Now we're going to need to look and find which two are the same so we can find SO2's rate or order. So when you look at chlorine and experiment 3 and 4 have chlorine being the same. Experiment 3 is bigger so we'll use that on top. So experiment three over experiment four. 1.164 equals K. Uh, 0.4 N times 0.8 M over 0.5837 equals K, 0.2 N, 0.8 M. K's and M's cancel out, leaving us with 2 equals 2N, so N is equal to 1. So SO2 is to the first power. Okay, and if the problem had said to calculate your constant, go ahead and try solving that and you can restart it when you've got that. Alright, so I'm writing our rate law expression, which was that one. And then I'm going to pick my equation. I'm just going to use 4 because it's the easiest for me to show you. So 0 0.5837 is equal to K. Concentration of SO2 at that in that experiment is 0 0.2 and chlorine is 0.8. Make sure you use the orders that you just determined. So K is equal to 4.57 or 4.56. And again, we're going to go over the units in class. But the overall order for this reaction is third order. And that concludes this lesson.